اهلا بيكم في دروس الاحياء للصف الثاني ثانوي لغات uh, today's uh, uh, lecture will will start talking about excretion and especially in uh, man so let's begin <coughs> first of all the concept and the importance of excretion a lot of waste products uh, you know accumulate in the body due to the uh, the metabolism carried out by each cell so they, the living organism must get rid of these waste products as soon as they are formed because they are harmful and they are uh, cause of infections and, and many problems okay the process by which the living organism get gets rid of these waste products is called excretion um, excretion in animals, um, uh, well, there is a rather uh, um, different definition of excretion here. The process of excretion refers only to materials that leave the body through plasma membranes. Okay, so that means that the undigested food, the stools, I mean, the feces, are not considered as excretion as well as the nitrogen that enters in the air and leaves uh, the lungs again to the outside is not excretion okay but it's getting rid of substances that through plasma membranes for example like co2 and water they resulted from degeneration of organic molecules and nitrogenous waste products like ammonia and urea and uric acid okay um, 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 and they must be uh, excreted. The organs that carry out excretion are the skin, the lungs, the liver, and the kidneys. So it's the skin, el gild, reatin, el kabid, we el kiliatin. Skin, the lungs, liver, and kidneys. Remember that. In addition, the excretion in animals uh, regulate the body contents of minerals by uh, getting rid of excess minerals and uh, keeping back to the body minerals we need uh, the body needs you know this kind of exchange it it maintains the body content of minerals uh, also as an example uh, of spices that have volatile content some of them be excreted through the lungs the volatile part and the rest of it be, uh, through excreted through the kidneys okay poisonous materials as well are uh, transformed into non-poisonous uh, forms and uh, the body gets rid of them by means of the liver or the kidney this is excretion in animals if we talk about the skin itself it's considered excretion organ in man. It's the biggest organ actually in man. It covers the whole, the whole surface of the body. And uh, if you if you if you take a look at the ex the the excreted material versus the excretion organ, carbon dioxide, of course, the excretion organ is the lung, water, kidneys, skin, see, and lungs. Nitrogenous waste products, kidneys, skin, uh, salts, kidneys, and skin. So skin it takes major part in the excretion uh, in the body. Spices, kidneys, and lungs, especially the, of course, the volatile substances. Um, if you want to study the skin structure, it will be composed of, of uh, three layers actually epidermis and dermis and the layer of hypodermis which is connective tissue but here you should know only it's the epidermis and dermis that counts um, uh, the epidermis consists of several layers of epithelial cells as you can see here and the upper layer is a uh, dead cell layer is called uh, forms a layer of keratin on the top uh, it's always continuously uh, shed down or replaced from uh, beneath by the cells uh, beneath the keratin layer. Uh, at the base of the inner layer there are pigment cells uh, that contain the dipelanin, 
uh, for the pigmentation of the skin. So the epidermis on top is it's it's multiple several layers of epithelial cells covered by keratin. Uh, below is the dermis intermingling with it, and in the epidermis. Um, the uh, top layers is continuously replaced because it's uh, being shed off and at the base there are cells with granules uh, which are the melanin for the pigmentation of the skin. Uh, the dermis starts from here from these papillae that's called dermal papillae and this layer is the dermis. As you go down it's the hypodermis the, the layer of connective tissue and uh, the dermis is next to the epidermis and um, uh, it's connective tissue that contains uh, blood capillaries, nerve endings, lymphatics, sweat glands, uh, fat, subitious glands, fatty cells and hair follicles. Okay, so it's all this layer, dermis. If you take a look, take a look at the sweat gland, this is for example a sweat gland, is a cold tube that reaches the skin and opens through a pore for the uh, getting rid of excess uh, sodium chloride for example. Um, uh, the sweat is continuously being produced on the surface of the skin to help decrease the body temperature so it's important to have uh, sweat. Um, if you look, take a look at the hair, it, it's composed of shaft and hair follicle. This is the hair follicle. It has a sensory nerve ending here at, uh, that feels response to touch, pain, and temperature. Uh, it has a subitious gland near the top to, because its oily secretion helps the hair to go through the skin. Okay? And uh, a muscle connected to uh, the hair follicle, this is called the erector pili muscle, the one that makes the hair stand. You know, the magisma ki ashar, the magilda ki ashar, hey, the muscle that contracts, the erector pili muscle that pulls on uh, the hair follicle. Um, uh, this is the uh, simple structure of the uh, hair in the uh, dermis layer. Um, uh, it, the other organ for excretion, uh, the major organ for excretion is the kidney. Uh, the lower animals used to have long kidneys each, uh, you know, at the side of the vertebral column. In higher animals, uh, higher vertebrates, mammals, the kidneys are more firm and they lie behind the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a bag of a mem closed membranous bag that lines the abdomen the organs of the abdomen, you will study it in medicine, that called the peritoneum. So the kidneys are retroperitoneal or behind the peritoneum. This is very important. From each kidney a tube uh, emerges which is uh, the ureter emerges from a region in the kidney called the pelvis of the kidney. Uh, and an artery and the vein, the renal artery coming from the aorta, the renal vein going to the inferior vena cava. Uh, as you can see here, the kidney outer part is convex and the inner part is uh, concave. It's 12 centimeters long and about 7 centimeters wide and thickness is 3 centimeters. Um, uh, this is uh, regarding its structure as you can see here and from the inside it's divided into cortex and medulla. And the medulla, you see, this, this is all this is the medulla composed of renal pyramids. You will study this in details uh, later. Renal pyramids. Uh, it consti constitutes the medulla of the kidney. Internally, as I told you before, it's, it's divided into cortex and medulla. And uh, the unit for the function of the kidney is the nephron. All this is the nephron. What is it made of? It's made of capsule with a capillary bed the, uh, where the branches of the renal artery and the beginning of the renal vein uh, from this glomerulus called glomerulus or the capsule around the capillary bed is called the Bowman's capsule. Um, okay, Bowman's capsule will lead you to the proximal or the first 
convoluted or coiled tubule, then it will lead you to the loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle. It has a descending limb, ascending limb. Then again to the cortex as the distal convoluted tubules or coiled tube and the collecting duct in the medulla. So again, if you study the difference between cortex and medulla, the parts of the nephron present in the cortex are the Bowman's capsule, proximal coiled tubule, distal coiled tubule, and the beginning of the collecting duct. See that? What's, uh, the, what parts of the nephron in the medulla? It's the loop of Henle and the collecting duct. See that? And urine is filtered through this collecting duct to be collected by the ureter. To, uh, um, uh, to convey it to the urinary bladder and store it there. Okay, now through the ureter, the urine uh, passes to the urinary bladder. It's a storage for urine and guarded by a sphincter uh, in order to, to control evacuation of uh, urine when needed. Okay, the urine leaves the urinary bladder and uh, exits the body through the urethra the tube called the, called the urethra. So again, blood filters in the Bowman's capsule. Uh, to the blood filters, the plasma, uh, the filter it goes to the proximal coil tubule, then the loop of Henle, then the distal coil tubule, again in the cortex, then the collecting duct. Urine is formed, collecting, uh, collected by the ureters. Ureters to the urinary bladder, which is a reservoir or storage for urine guarded by a sphincter to control the evacuation of urine and um, uh, when uh, urinating the bladder contracts expelling the urine through a duct called the urethra this is um, the uh, formation the story of urine and how is it formed and getting uh, rid of uh, urine extraction um, um, Blood, uh, you know, floods the kidney. Uh, blood coming from the aorta through the renal artery and going through the veins to the inferior vena cava. The artery subdivides into many arterioles as is uh, uh, to reach the cup-shaped nephron. See, remember the uh, capillary tuft I told you about in the moment's capsule, capsule? This is the end result of the continuous divisions of the branches of the renal artery. Then through this capillary bed, the plasma is uh, filtered. Uh, the filter contains water, wastes, and salts, and glucose. But the blood cells and large protein molecules remain or stay inside the blood. They are not filtered. So it's selective here. The filtration is selective. What happens if all the contents of this fluid is filtered? This is incompatible with life because we need to compensate for the loss of 170 liters of water per day, you know, to, to compensate for its loss. So reabsorption of the required water and glucose and mineral substances back into the blood to keep it in, inside the body, this must takes, uh, take place. It's incompatible with life to filter all the contents. The remaining liquid uh, contains um, nitrogenous uh, waste products, uh, some inorganic salts, and excess water which forms the urine. Okay? This is how urine is extracted or how it's formed. Reabsorption takes place in the nephron. I told you to keep the uh, water and minerals inside the body. Uh, urine then passes to the ureters and then collected by the urinary bladder and through the urethra to the outside and all this, all this is called together the urinary system. Uh, we can live by one kidney. Actually, we can live by one eighth of one kidney. Okay, see um, um, uh, how much. In this case, the kidney grows uh, uh, and become slightly bigger to perform its, the function of two kidneys. Okay, 
Um, uh, this is about the function of the kidney. And to give you an idea about the work of the kidney, the human body contains about 5.6 liters of blood, 1.2 to 1.3 uh, a liter of blood passes through the kidney per minute. The kidney filtrates out uh, 1,600 liters um, uh, daily, okay? And uh, of the total blood volume, three liters of plasma pass through the kidney to be worked upon or examined about 560 times per day. These are hints about the work of the kidney uh, per day. Uh, the last or organ of excretion is the liver. The liver has uh, its role in digestion and metabolism, but uh, um, uh, in addition, it has roles in uh, getting rid or excretion by, for example, detoxification of food of absorbed molecules from the small intestine to, to purify the blood and also separate the amino group from the excess amino acids. This is called deamination to form the urea. Okay, so it again, um, uh, w together with its role in digestion and metabolism, it has detoxifying function. It breaks down the poisonous substances which are, uh, which are absorbed by the small intestine and through the process of deaminations, uh, it uh, gets rid of excess amino acids and, and converts it to urea to be expelled uh, with urine. Okay? This is for, uh, the liver as uh, um, ex 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 excretor excretory function. The uh, artificial kidney, you all heard about the artificial kidney. Uh, these uh, patients with kidney failure uh, do, uh, do this procedure every now and then, uh, and then to keep their uh, their blood modified, purified, and uh, uh, free of waste products that the kidney, the failing kidney, cannot get rid of. Uh, it's simply by diverting the blood from the artery of a patient to a tube um, channeled through semi-permeable tube immersed in a bath containing all the normal blood constituents. Since the concentration of the bad products is higher in blood than the surrounding pool, so it will diffuse out of the blood, leaving it the blood it, uh, in contact with uh, the normal blood constituents and gets purified again. The patient receives artificial kidney treatment for several hours each day two to three times a week, so they suffer actually. Um, I hope you got the maximum benefit from this lecture and thank you very much for watching.